Welcoming the three-time champions from Immaculata College is their coach, Kathy Rush. Speaking on their behalf is team member, Teresa Grintz. Ladies and gentlemen, the Mighty Max of Immaculate College. Good evening. Um, it is an absolute pleasure to be here, and um, we are a Catholic school, so you might be familiar with the Catholic Mass. It can be a high, long, forever Mass, or it can be a quick, short, weekday Mass. I promise you the weekday Mass. Tonight we feel like young college girls again, and we are living the dream. There is no question, it is an absolute blast to be here. We'd like to um, thank the Na Naismith Basketball Memorial Hall of Fame, uh, John DeLiva and Jerry Colangelo for all they've done, and to be a part of this is terrific. We want to thank the Honors Committee for considering Immaculata and remembering us because you know when you get old like us, you do forget. A special congratulations to our class members. We are thrilled for you and absolutely delighted in your enshrinement. A special thanks to our family and friends who have been with us forever, not only tonight, but when we were playing, and um, we love it. A special shout out to the Bucket Brigade. If you're from Immaculata, you know what that means, no more Sid. And to Immaculata University and their administrators and faculty, and to those officials who have traveled here tonight to celebrate one more time the legacy of these teams. And a special thanks to our coach, Kathy Rush. For Kathy to bring us into the Naismith Memorial Basketball Hall of Fame is quite a treat. And Kathy not only taught us a lot about basketball, but she also taught us a great deal about life. And one of the lessons that she taught all of us was that you could have a career and a family too in 1970, and that was a big thing back then. We got that lesson up close and every day. So we didn't call Kathy coach, we called her Mrs. Rush. So thank you, Mrs. Rush, one more time. <laughs> It's only fitting that we thank Ed Rush. Once we got past the first national championship, and you have to understand, when we played in normal Illinois, that first championship, five students attended the game. That was it. After that, Ed went on a marketing spree, and we never played in anything but a full house. So we thank him for his marketing and everything that he did for us. The reporting situation was interesting. George Heaslip from the Daily Local, nicknamed us. We were called the Max at that time. He said, they'll have to be the Mighty Max. And of course, Dick Weiss from the Philadelphia Daily News followed us and made us legendary. Tonight, go ahead. I think they would both like to be cheered for. Tonight, Betty Ann Hoffman Quinn, Janet Rook Boltz, Denise Conway Crawford, Janet Young Eline, Reenie Muth Portland, Judy Mara Martelli, Sue O'Grady Forsyth, Pat O'Pelia, Maureen Mooney, Maureen Stallman, Mary Ann Crawford Stanley, Barb Dubel Kelly, Dr. Marie Ligori Williams, Patty Mulhern Longren, Tina Crawl, and Mary Scharf. These are the women who played on those three national championship teams. People often ask, did we understand the impact that we had when we were doing this and doing our thing? And of course, that answer is no. We were clueless. We were just having a good time. We were playing ball. 
We were enjoying our friends and making it happen. The story of the Mighty Max is really quite uncomplicated. The first year, there were 11 players on that team, and 10 were from the city of Philadelphia and the surrounding communities. Yes, it's true, we did burn the gym down, and that's another story, so we didn't have one. So what we did is we improvised. We just simply went across the street to the mother house, and this is where the young women were training to become sister servants in the Immaculate Heart of Mary. They had a gym, so we went there. We would practice in that gym after the sisters, the postulants or the novices, were roller skating. You know what it's like to play on a court after somebody's been roller skating on it? <laughs> but that's what we did. Our uniforms, they were a treat. They were uh, blue woolen tunics, had a cinch belt. We had one set. We played four games in three days, two and one, one set of uniforms. Our basketballs, now this was, we didn't have, we had a couple, but they were pretty lousy. So what we did, because we didn't have a gym, is we played all on the road all the time. So we were always having a away game. So what we would do, we were crafty, is that we would trade one of our basketballs with one of our opponents. <laughs> Unfortunately, the opponents didn't always know what was going on. So what would happen is, we would assign one player on our team to take one of our not so good grip basketballs and place it on the rack and remove one of theirs and take it home. Now, we didn't steal the basketballs because we did replace it, but we made sure that whoever was responsible that week to make the switch went to confession on Friday just to be safe. We needed a gym, we needed basketballs and some uniforms, not a problem, we found a way to do it. Cue the set, what we needed now was one coach. Order up one Hall of Fame coach. We had it made, Kathy shows up on campus and signs up for the job for a whopping $450. I understand the negotiations could have went as high as 500 and I think Kathy probably would have taken the job for nothing, but anyway, that's where it goes. You win a few championships and everybody wants to make a movie. There is a movie made about this team, it's called The Mighty Max. Hollywood calls. They say, we would like you, the team, to be a cameo in the movie. We said, okay, we're fun-loving people, what do you want us to do? Hollywood recommended that we be a referee or a coach. We got together, we said, we don't think so. Hollywood was not happy. They hung up on us. A Couple days later, they called back and they said, we have a spot for you. We're gonna put your team in this piece in the, in the movie. The scene is, it's a church. The first 12 rows are actresses dressed as students. The next six rows are actresses all dressed as professed sister servants of the Immaculate Heart of Mary, including Ellen Burstyn, who's playing Mother Superior. It takes a long time to do a movie. And anyway, our scene was, Carla Cugino came in, she sat down in our pew where we were, we were smallest to tallest, and when she handed a paper down, and as that paper was passed, the camera would put each one of us in the cameo. Not a bad scene, but it took forever to do it. Sure enough, someone came about halfway through the production and said, ladies and gentlemen, in this first row of professed sisters on the right side of the church are the original 1972 Mighty Max. There was a nice, polite golf clap. I swear to you, on my father's grave, 20 minutes later, this absolutely, positively gorgeous, drop-dead actress had what had to be her first thought ever. <laughs> she turned to us, she looked straight at us, and she said, wow, that is like so cool. You all played ball together, you all went to school together, and then you all became nuns. Women supporting women, that was a big theme for us. Sister Mary of Lourdes was the president of the college. She was a pretty shrewd businesswoman. Anyway, we got our first chance to go to the national tournament. There was no budget for this. There was no contingency fund, contingency fund that said we could do this. But I do believe that by her sending us made a huge deal. We played in the regionals 
and lost the championship game to Westchester by about 32 points. We got clobbered. The Nationals were played two weeks later. There was no money to do this. They had to raise it. And Sister Mary of Lourdes said, we're going to send them. But we had one more game to play, regular season. So Coach Rush did exactly what any smart, self-respecting coach would do. She benched the starters. For instance, just played us a little bit. The score was relatively close for a knowledgeable fan. The next morning, at 6.30 a.m., and I'm sure it was just after Mass, Coach Rush received a telephone call from Sister Mary of Lourdes. Sister Mary of Lourdes wanted to inquire what the heck happened in last night's game. Kathy told her that she was resting the starters. Mary of Lourdes was okay with that, and she said, look, Coach, when you get to Illinois, you make sure you play the starters. <laughs> she raised the money, raised about $2,500. Of the 11, she could send eight to Illinois. Can you imagine today, John Calabari has his team. They're going to, ten, uh, to the Nationals. He says, oh, you three guys, you can't go. Try that today. We stayed three home. One of those was Judy Mara Martelli. Judy wrote the most gorgeous letter to us before we left, wishing us well and what needed to be. You talk about class with a capital C, there it was. When Gino Oriema did his enshrinement speech, he said something to the effect that when his players received an award, he thought he had something to do with that. And I believe that. This past week, when Becky Hammond was named a first full-time assistant coach with the San Antonio Spurs, what a great honor. Becky will tell that story 30 years from now, how she did that. And who knows what will take place and what will happen. But I would like to think that the women who have played before us, those that are enshrined in the Naismith Hall of Fame, had something to do with that. Aristotle included among the virtues that of being a truly good friend. We liked our friendships, and we called them virtuous friendships. These friendships would last the test of time, and they did. Tonight, we are whole again. We lost the co-captains from our first championship team in 1972. Pat Opelia, we lost at the age of 29, and Maureen Mooney, we lost at the age of 53. Far too early for these young women to leave us. But as we join tonight, we have the chance to take their name and their spirit as we make this magical step into basketball history. When Kathy made her induction speech, she talked about the trait that these teams had, and one of them was love, and she was right. We had a saying when we played, to play the game was great, to win the game was greater. To love the game was greatest. We loved the game, and more importantly, I think the game loved us back. We're from the greatest city in the world, the city of Philadelphia. And we'll <laughs> when you win in Philadelphia, they never forget your name. The Philadelphia Eagles from the 60s, the championship Phillies in 80 and 2008, the Sixers with Billy Cunningham in 83 and 68, the Flyers in 73 and 74. Now, the list may not be long for that city, but I can tell you <laughs> that the 72, 73, 74 national team, we are remembered and loved, and we felt that love, so we are forever grateful. Winning a championship today entails perhaps a visit to the White House, a parade, and rings. In the early 70s, while attending a small all-women's Catholic college in Chester County, Pennsylvania, the chances of those three things happening were slim and none. What they did provide for us was a banquet and a song. The composer and author of the lyrics of that song was Sister, Mary, Sister Marion William Hoban, who, will later become the, who would later become the eighth president of the college. Sister would create the song based on the happenings from the past season, and it was really quite a treat. We never knew the, the actual tunes, but we loved the words. It was all about us. Tonight, Sister Marion William has made the trip to Springfield, Massachusetts to celebrate with this team one more time. Sister has been in the order for over seven decades. She and her comrades were probably, no, they were. They were our greatest fans. So tonight, 
A very special thank you to you, Sister Marion, and all your buddies who took such great care of us. Thank you. In the In the fall of 2012, Sister Marion gave a speech at the University of Notre Dame at the age of 88 on the importance of ethics in sports. Sister Marion was asked a question about being at Immaculata during the time of those teams and watching the Mighty Max play. The individual wanted to know, what was it like watching those teams play and what were those players really like? I will share with you Sister Marion's answer. These young ladies played because they enjoyed it. They played because they loved the game, because they loved Immaculata, and they wanted to bring honor to her name. They were the ethical people who tried their best to love God, to love themselves, and to love one another. They played like the champions they were, and the sports world and all who knew them will never forget them. Tonight, with this enshrinement, Sister Marion's statements become a reality. On behalf of my teammates and my co-captain, Denise Conway Crawford, Betty Ann, Sue, Pat, Maureen, Janet, second Janet, Maureen, Reenie, Judy, Mary Ann, Barbara, Marie, Patty, Mary, Tina, and myself, and our coach, Kathy Rush, we are honored, grateful, and humbled to be enshrined as a member of the 2014 class of the Naismith Memorial Basketball Hall of Fame. Thank you, and God bless you.